Mike here. A little update on the fridge. Uh, every day getting home from work, uh, it's like I'm just excited to get in the shop and see what kind of data I collected over the course of the day. Uh, it was pretty warm today. Uh, got into, I'd say, into the 80s, uh, maybe the low 80s, but here in this shop, uh, it just it's, it's like an oven and uh, when you whip that door open there's a blast of heat and typically I, I, I usually guess you know somewhere in the, in the 90s I know it's going to be and today it was about 96 degrees in here um, so uh, but you know pleased to say that the machine's still running uh, it's about 29 degrees inside well where the thermostat probe is right now um, it's maintaining around uh, I think it's in the, about 38 degrees in the bottom of the fridge so I can improve that once I get a baffle in there I think um, I got some stainless cut I just need to get a hold of that and, uh, and bend it up and install that um, so uh, I changed up the zoom box a little bit it crashed on me yesterday which uh, kind of irritated me I, I think I got up in the oh no I got home from work yesterday and uh, it looked like the thing had been hadn't run in like 15 hours it was just continuous flat data the whole time so it looked a little too strange and so that wasn't the case I had to shut the thing down and I even rebooted the computer so um, it's kind of surprising because I'm, I'm taking much uh, more coarse sample rates now at about 15 seconds um, it allows me to look at a little more data at, at once without having to scroll back and forth because these run times are you know, an hour to two and a half hours and then the off times could be as long as you know 12 hours uh, so uh, I'll just line you up here so you can see. So um, this is when I started it, restarted it yesterday. Um, right here off to the left, uh, each one of these segments is approximately two hours. Uh, this is 2,500 samples across at 15 seconds uh, sampling rate. Um, so uh, it pretty well just shut off right before I got home yesterday. Um, actually, you know, excuse me, I, I adjusted everything and, and reset this, so this is when I got home. Um, you can see these little squiggles here, the, the top mark right there, the blue one, that's superheat, it's discharge. Um, and then the one below it there, that is the uh, subcooling. And uh, notice the, the sawtooth there, um, that's the wind. Uh, whenever the wind blows across the condenser, it, uh, it cools a little bit better. Um, and then there's a general downward trend that you see here. That's the zoom box temperature. Um, also, the, uh, the thermocouple that's on the uh, suction right before the compressor, since it's out in ambient, even insulated, it obviously it warms up a good bit. And there's a general, general downward trend. Now this is up in the, in the low 90s, and then over the course of the night it cooled down. So um, here's, a sh here's a shutdown right here, and then uh, the upward trend of the superheat and the superheat uh, after the intercooler. Um, this large jump right here, that's the box temperature in the bottom. Um, you can see how that and the uh, superheat that's in the thermocouple that's in the, the box there uh, pretty closely correspond. They're going to stay close to each other. The temperature doesn't vary in there by just maybe a few degrees from spot to spot. Um, but that large jump right there, that's when I had the box open. My buddy was over and we were talking about it. Um, and then the coolant, the glycol freeze there, it uh, pulled the temp back down. And you have four tiny little spikes right there. Those are four beers that I got out over the course of the, uh, the evening. Probably too, too many, but uh, you know, all for science, right? So um, anyway, this morning I come in out here to find out that it, uh, it held all the way through the night without running for uh, about 12 and a half hours, 12 hours, 45 minutes, uh, till it kicked on right in the morning there. Um, actually, there was another failure this morning. It, uh, it quit at like three o'clock in the morning, this software did, and uh, I had to disconnect and reconnect, but uh, I'm absolutely confident that uh, it hadn't run through the night, just based on what I know about it so far. Um, then this morning, it ran for about two hours there. Um, I added a little bit of refrigerant just here a moment ago because uh, as you can see the superheat there, it took, oh hell, almost an hour to really drop down to, uh, to saturation there. You can see once it flattens out um, and the temperature of the box continues to lower and the low side pressure falls, um, the superheat of value goes with it as it stays uh, well saturated. Um, <clears throat> So, like I said, I added a little bit of refrigerant to try to push a little more into the low side. I probably have a small leak. Um, so that's a run right there. 
this morning, early this morning. Looks like it shut off about 7.30. Oh, Christ. That's the kind of stuff that's been happening. It might be the fact that I'm running Windows on a Mac too, you know, who knows? It's just Windows. So, about two hour run time for a, um, actually less than two hours, um, to extract and discharge the heat from, you know, 12 and a half hours being off. Now, early in the morning there, the temperature had gotten down to about 60 degrees. The load on the, the device um, decreased significantly. But then things changed very much in the mid-morning here. You see a very sharp rise in the ambient temperature, starting at about 9.30. Uh, it really started to, to go up. Um, even our uh, our superheat reading um, taken there inside the box right after the evaporator um, started to rise pretty significantly. Now it's not very far from the, there's a, a hole there that's probably not very well uh, sealed from the air. Um, uh, so that might cause uh, it to pick up a little extra heat. Plus the just the copper itself that's so warm here in the shop um, outside of the box, uh, it's insulated, but you know it's going to pick up some heat and it's going to transfer that heat into the brass uh, of the thermocouple probe there. Um, so then over the course of the day, it was off for about five hours this morning until noon. Um, so it was even you know, even with that sharp rise in temperature in the ambient uh, temperature, it uh, that that thermal mass that uh, that phase change you know non eutectic uh, glycol solution there it uh, absorbed the heat that the box was absorbing and kept this blue dark blue line pretty well um, in check and uh, the temperature of the in the bottom of the box stays really really quite even um, and then here about well, it was a little after 12, 12, 15 or so, uh, the machine kicked on. It's 3.42 right now and it's still running. Um, that's a long run time, but it was 96 degrees in here. I mean, over the course of that, it probably went from about 85 to 96 over that, uh, that run. Um, so uh, it's not that unreasonable. I'm just happy that things even able to keep the thing you know, keep itself cold at uh, at such a high ambient temperature uh, because this, you know, it's a thin walled little mini fridge. It's a piece of junk, uh, so I could do a lot better with a better insulated fridge. Um, so we had 214 was our peak for discharge superheat. That's pretty damn hot. Um, uh, let's see. Right now we're at um, go live here again so I can get the actual values. Um, oh, it's it's quit. I'm gonna have to stop it and restart it. <laughs> but anyway, it's in uh, about high 120s, 130s on subcooling there. Um, that's right where I, uh, I sh open the door up. So whenever I whip the door open, I'm in a sudden rush of air and the discharge superheat dropped, the subcooling temperature dropped, um, the uh, superheat value before the compressor but after the heat interchanger rose very, very high. And then things started to settle back out, and then the superheat value started to rise back up, but lower than it previously was. Uh, same with the subcooling, till it kind of evened itself out. And then I added a little bit of refrigerant, which um, caused a little bit to back up in the, the uh, condenser. And uh, again, lowering the, uh, the temperature on the, the subcooling end of things. There's a little bit more liquid backing up in there to, to discharge its heat before it heads on to the uh, metering device. Um, and then there's a small little blue spike there where I open up the door to check the uh, situation on the glycol. So, um, gotta say I'm happy, still happy with it. Um, still trying to figure out uh, what the appropriate uh, thermostat setting should be to keep uh, the box temperature in the bottom under 40 degrees. Um, ideally, I'd like to shoot for about 38. Um, we're, uh, we're at about 38 right now, so we're not doing too bad. I'm running the thermostat from 20, 25 to 36 right now. One of the nice long uh, wide slew range. And uh, right in there is where I'm keeping the thermostat probe uh, because it tends to offset um, uh, opening and closing the door, causing it to, to rise suddenly and keep the compressor on perhaps unnecessarily. Um, eventually, once I put a baffle into this thing, I'm probably gonna install that thermostat probe uh, probably against the metal of the baffle, 
uh, but back in, maybe inside the baffle. I'm not exactly sure what's going to be the best way to go. Um, and, and in that way, it's reading the, the, the temperature of the air that's sinking off of the, uh, the glycol tank rather than you know a rush of, of warm air from the, from the ambient whenever you whip the door open. Um, in addition, maybe the metal, if I keep it close to the metal or even clamp to the metal, that'll, uh, that'll keep it from, from, uh, from rising too much. So uh, Tonight, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm just going to keep an eye on it here for the next day or two until I get that baffle built this weekend. And uh, that'll change matters a little bit, probably change the thermostat settings a little bit. But uh, if I can just keep this software running, um, I'm going to probably write a letter to the uh, company there and see if see what they can do to maybe develop something better or give me some options so I can uh, try to get something developed myself. So that's it for the update. Uh, thanks for watching.